Hello and welcome to Do It Yourself Musician. Today we're going to be doing the IKEA Rast Rack Hack. Or as I like to call it, the Double Rast Rack Hack. And if you don't know what that is, the IKEA Rast Rack is actually a bedside table or a nightstand that's sold at IKEA. And for some reason, I don't think it was for audio reasons, uh, Ikea manufactured this thing to be exactly the width of 19 inch rack mounts. So this wooden piece, this rack, this is actually a nightstand that's sold at Ikea. And you can see that I've mounted rack rail in it, both sides here, and it's perfectly, with no modification, exactly the width of a 19 inch rack mount. And so it makes the ideal thing to make cheap 19 inch racks out of. There are some videos on YouTube where guys are doing this, and that's where I got the idea. But I went one further. I originally built one, but one of them is, you know, only that tall. And uh, I just thought, well, I'll get two of them and I'll flip one upside down and put it on the other. And so I've got two, two of the Rast bedside tables with rack rails stacked one on top of the other. And it gives you a total of about uh, 16 uh, rack spaces is what you should get out of it. You get uh, in this area here, it's a 6U. Uh, if you leave the shelf in, these are like the two little shelves that are with the uh, bedside table. I just leave them in because you really are not going to gain a whole rack space so just leave them in for strength and actually this like this uh, synth here is just sitting on that. It's not even bolted into the rack so it's it's good for that. Also the sapphire is just sitting there too. It's not only actually have that bolted on yet. Uh, but anyways it, it goes uh, 6U in between these shelves you'll get four units and then if you want, you can get another six units at the bottom. I just put a little short 2U rack there, uh, rack rail there to hold uh, the power conditioner. And then of course I've got my uh, PC below that, my music PC. And let me show you the side of it here. You can see it's, like I said, it's just two of them that are stacked one on top of the other and they're bolted together you might be able to see the bracket in there there's four of those brackets that hold the two units together um, and it works the whole system works really really well uh, one or two drawbacks that it has is that it of course is not slanted back or nothing it's just straight up and down rack that doesn't bother me uh, it might bother some some other people, it, it's fairly strong, it's, it's really sturdy. Um, I wouldn't probably carry it around or try to move it when it's loaded with like as much stuff as I have here. But it could be possible, I, it seems a little weak to try to pick it up. But I think if you wanted to, you probably could put wheels on the bottom of this. Um, I think I'd put another sheet of plywood and then put wheels on the bottom if you wanted to make it rolling. The other sort of drawback, would be that it's not very deep across here. And you can see some of the deeper units actually stick out the back. Uh, so all the cabling and everything, you can see it from the side. Again, I've actually found this not to be a drawback. This is actually a strength as far as I'm concerned because it's a lot easier to reach back here and work on this mess um, of wiring without having to reach around and into the rack, you know. So for me, and I think probably for a lot of other people, these things will work out great uh, as a 19 inch rack mount for a home studio. And uh, the bedside tables at Ikea, and I'll show you their webpage so you can see what they are, they are $14.99. So uh, that's like 30 bucks for the two bedside tables. And then of course you need uh, other hardware to actually turn it into a rack and that's a little more but not too much it's way cheaper than anything you could buy at Guitar Center or anywhere and I'm gonna build a second one in this video and I'm probably gonna put it over here on this side 
where my guitar rig is. I'm probably going to have to move all that stuff and put it there. And the reason I want to do that is because the Sapphire Pro 40 is a pretty new addition to my setup and it's kind of being buried by all the synth stuff above it and I've even got more synth stuff that I want to put in this rack so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the Sapphire uh, stuff like this reverb I've got some other 19 inch rack effects also I'm going to move them over into the second rack on the left side and make that be just sort of the recording and mixing rack and then I'll put more synth sampler units in this rack and make this be just an instrument rack over here so alright uh, next I'm going to show you all the parts to build these for yourself and then after that we will we'll, I'll show you how to how to make your very own IKEA double rust rack hack Alright, what you'll need to build your IKEA Rast Rack are, of course, two of the, the Rast uh, nightstands, as they're called. They are $14.99 each at IKEA. You will need some rack rail. Uh, if you're going to leave the shelves in the, the Rast Rack, uh, you're going to need uh, six, four, and six, again, rack rail that'll give you a total of 16 spaces. I'm just going to use uh, 6 and a 4, just do the top and the middle of mine. Uh, you also need these 2-inch uh, double wide mending plates as they're called. You can find these in the fencing section of Home Depot. Basically I think they just use these to make uh, sort of a butt joint out of two pieces of of a 2x4 you know when you're building a fence or something you find these over in the fence department by the you know like like hinges and clasp and things like that for fences um, you can also find something similar to this in um, the framing uh, department of hardware stores uh, basically it's just a plate that has four holes in it and that's what you're going to use to to screw one of these racks to the other, one on top of another, uh, to make that joint. And the screws you'll need for that, the best ones to get are these uh, number 10 half inch uh, wood screws. They're just Phillips panhead wood screws, and you'll need about, I don't know, 30 of those. Number eights work also. Here's some that I got from Reliable Hardware. Uh, and optionally, you could use some uh, industrial strength Velcro uh, to hold these uh, two units together before you bolt them together. And it also kind of works as a, I don't know, kind of a, a gasket between the two unfinished edges of these units uh, before you uh, bolt them together. And as far as rack rail, you can get this stuff a lot of places, you know, any any uh, musical instrument place like you know Guitar Center or any of those places, Sweetwater, whatever, they're gonna have rack rail. It's usually kind of expensive. Um, I get mine uh, where I get a lot of my stuff and that's reliable hardware in uh, North Hollywood in Los Angeles. Um, and you can go on their website, I'll link it in below, and, and it's, uh, you know, it's a great, they have great prices uh, on rack rail there. Uh, you can also order it uh, off Amazon from different places and, of course, eBay, I'm sure. All right, so the first step in doing this is going to be to assemble the rast racks. Just do that according to the IKEA instructions. Uh, and then after that, we'll start to modify them. Actually, before I start assembling the rast racks, uh, I do want to mention that uh, these plates, I think, were three dollars twenty-two cents. Uh, the screws were like five dollars, and the total cost of uh, rack rail. If I did the whole thing, all sixteen spaces would be about twenty-one bucks. That makes the entire uh, sixteen space rack come out to be a little over sixty dollars, and uh, that's pretty good. Uh, you can't find a sixteen space wooden rack for that even just a cheap uh, open frame 
16 space rack that you could buy at the guitar center or whatever is going to be a, you know probably a hundred and fifty dollars so you can't you can't really get get it as cheap as we're building it here and like i said it has some drawbacks but it, it works pretty good so i'll start putting these together now and poof you're assembled poof you're assembled you guys didn't know i was a wizard did you okay the process for connecting two of these uh, ikea rast bedside tables together or at least how I did it, was this is how it normally sits as the bedside table. What I did is I just flipped it over like that. And then the other one I kept right side up and I put it on like that. Just try to make this up the best I could. And that makes the whole rack so you have six six spaces here four spaces then another six if you want and when you screw this together and you leave these shelves in here it makes for a pretty solid unit I, I suppose that you could just keep you know do without these shelves uh, screw it together with the plates and then just put you know a full 16 U rack rail up and down that it, it should still be pretty strong with the rack rail screwed in there and everything uh, and the four space just fits right in the middle right here but this is where I, I actually ran into a little bit of trouble is that this is just a little shy for a, a 4U rack rail right here so you can either I don't know, you could carve it out a little, maybe. But what I did, which I know is kind of a weird solution, is that I put I put Velcro uh, between these. I basically, I put Velcro, you know, the hook along here, the loop along there, and I, I Velcroed those together, the top and bottom. And now that's a weird, kind of a weird way to do it, but like I said, it's sort of, it holds them together while you're working on it, but it also it adds just a little bit of gap to enable you to get that in there. So it does kind of help to do that. So if you don't have any Velcro, I, I would suggest that you probably get some and do that because it's actually kind of a convenient way to do it. Uh, otherwise, I guess you could, you know, like I said, you could carve this out a little to make the rack rail fit, or you could separate these a tiny bit with washers or something. Um, so I'm going to move on to doing the Velcro and then I'll actually screw these together. Okay, I've got my Velcro here. Hook in the loop. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm just going to cut it to length to run down here. Something like that. You don't have to be too precise with it. And if you stick, if you stick half of it on here. Try to line that up pretty good. Stick half of it like that on there, and you use a like a box cutter or something. Let's see, I'm not sure actually what the best way to cut this is. If I come from beneath. Hang on. Cut this back a little first. The scissors. That. There we go. Yeah, just run down along the wood, trying not to cut into it really. That. And you can stick the other piece on this side. 
so you'll get both sides out of you know one foot long piece or so. Okay, and just do that uh, on the the other one. Just do the the loop on the other side. I just did the hook there, so I'm gonna do the loop on the other side. And uh, uh, of course, I'll clean this up and make this look a lot nicer. But I'll go ahead and and do that. Do the loop on the other side, then I'll come back and attach them together. Okay, I've got my uh, Velcro on here. I've got the hook portion down here and I've got the loop on this one. So now I'll assemble these and I'll try to get them straight because it's going to be hard to pull it apart <laughs> if I don't. Hopefully the other side's pretty straight to begin with. That's a little off. That feels, that feels pretty good. And that's definitely going to be strong enough to keep them together while you're working on them. But don't count on that to hold the rack together with anything in it though. That's just a temporary thing to hold together while you're working on it and hopefully provide. Yeah, see that? Now there's plenty of space for that uh, a four space rail to go in there so so the velcro actually works really good in this application all right now I will attach the plates to uh, put these together permanently and after that we'll do the we'll attach the rail okay we're looking at the uh, four space area in the joint between the two uh, racks here and this is the little plate that I was telling you about earlier that's gonna join them together you're gonna screw them together like that by having that plate go between both of them and hold them together um, and you can do you can screw this plate on with uh, anything like a 10 a 9 or a number 8 screw half inch screw. Um, I'm going to actually use for this I'm going to use some uh, number number eight half inch on the plate here and uh, the reason is just because I've got them and uh, I think they're just a little shorter and uh, will maybe stop it from going through too far because the number the tens that I have at least they seem to be a little bit longer and it's like a it's a little bit bigger screw which I think is actually better for for uh, screwing the rack rail to the the side here so I like to use the tens for that use the eights for this plate but you could use either uh, on any of it and and still do it I'm just I'm just doing it that way so but before you screw this plate on first thing you need to do is actually come up with a position for it and you have uh, on these uh, rest bed stands here they have sort of a chamfered edge and uh, you need to figure out where you want your your rack equipment to end up at what I do is I I go back past that chamfered edge and plus even a little bit more about about the thickness of a typical face plate of a 19 inch rack piece I just eyeball it in there uh, just so the the piece the rack pieces sort of uh, lay back in there a bit and they they don't stick up proud of the side. So I just you know eyeball that in there a little bit, something about like that, and then make a mark on the back side here, right up against the the back of the rack rail there. And uh, you see that mark I just made. And the reason for doing that is, is you need to make sure that this plate isn't in the way of your rack rail. So, so wherever that mark is, just go 
just a little bit beyond it uh, to screw your plate in there and that should let that work out fine all right to actually attach our plates we, we've made our mark where we have to put the plate slightly beyond that so it doesn't run into the to the uh, rack rail what I do is I just uh, kind of hold the plate in here and make uh, make some marks in here where the screws need to go at least two of them then what you need to do is you need to pre-drill for the screws that you're going to put in there uh, this is a 564 uh, bit I believe yeah for uh, the number eight screws so I'm going to pre-drill that out and don't go don't go through the side just pre-drill that like that And you put your plate on. Now if you don't if you don't pre-drill these, you run a risk of splitting this wood because you're really close to the the end of the wood, you can split that grain really easily so you really need to pre-drill those out and I'm going to put these two screws in to hold the plate there and I'm simply going to just screw in the center of the each of these holes try to try to be accurate and get right in the center of those your number number eight screws in and don't screw these down so tight that you strip them out either okay there you go and that's that's how you screw the top and the bottom of these together. You're going to do four of these plates, two up front, uh, two in the back. And uh, now that you've got one in, you can measure with the ruler this distance and make all the other, at least the other front side plate the same distance back. That way when you put your four space rack in, you can just go right against that to screw it screw it in so measure that distance and it, it uh, mount all the rest of these brackets that distance back from the front and once you get all four of them in uh, you'll have you'll have it all together and sturdy uh, I'll go ahead and do that and we'll come back and uh, screw the rack rail in all right I've got all four of my plates screwed in See it on the other side here. Those two plates, and that's uh, that's enough to make these two these two halves really sturdy and, and uh, really lock the whole the whole unit together. Um, and you can see, I remember it, I was telling you to measure. I think I came out. I don't know, like 50. 48, 50 millimeters or something. I think I did 50, uh, 48, and then also did this one back to 48. And I did the ones in the back. I think at 50. But the only reason you need to be aware of that is because you have to you have to have some clearance for this to go in. You've got to clear your your rack rail there. 
so you don't bump into that plate and you need a little little recess for uh, your the face of your rack units to get uh, recessed back in there a little bit and I'll go to that side like that so you can see that and of course up top here your six spaces you'll do the same thing just uh, recess them back a little bit and these uh, the rack rail itself I'm gonna put in there with the number 10 uh, screws and I'll probably just do one on the bottom one on the top for these four spacers and do three or four for the uh, for the six spacers up here and just like uh, with the uh, plates you need to drill pilot holes and you're gonna do that if you use number 10 screws you're gonna use a, a 332nd drill bit on it to drill your pilot holes so I'm gonna go ahead and do that uh, and get my uh, rack rails mounted up in here Okay, and here it is, the completed IKEA double rest rack. You can see I've got uh, one rest uh, upside down on the bottom, and it is tied to the one on the top, which is right side up, with metal strapping and screws, and I've got my rack rails inserted in there uh, they're all screwed in nice and strong and it makes one uh, nice strong unit one nice strong rack unit and there's the back and the plates on the back I mounted them I recessed them the same as the front in case I ever wanted to put rack rail in the back for you know whatever reason but that's it. It's a nice strong rack, so I guess I'll go put it into the studio and, and mount the at least the Sapphire Pro 40 into it because that's primarily what's going to be in this thing. And, and always, you, you've also got the top here. I might put, I'm thinking about getting a new mixer and I might put that on the top of this as well. So let's go and put it into, into the studio. All right, there it is. In its final place on the left side of my studio setup here. Uh, I've got my guitar rig to the left of it, which is now kind of out of room <laughs> for that, but I've kind of stuck the, uh, the rack into the back there a little bit, and I'll be able to roll my, my guitar amp back over in front of it for storage purposes, I guess. But I've got the uh, SRV2000 and the Sapphire Pro 40 mounted in there. Uh, and this obviously points out the need for another uh, power supply. I need to get a, another power conditioner to run this rack now. Or figure out some type of power strip situation, I don't know. But anyways, it'll be good having uh, all the, the recording stuff on this side. Um, the interface, the mixer is right there so it doesn't have to go far to the effects units whenever I run those through the mixer and whatnot. And plus I have this, this uh, space on top now. Uh, I might get a bigger 
mixer. Uh, I've got like a an eight input mixer now. I think I might go to a sixteen, and uh, that will definitely be good space to to put that. So there you go. That's the uh, IKEA uh, Rast Rack hack. Uh, I hope you. Uh, Got something good out of that and you you maybe consider building one of these for your studio setup if you like the video thumbs up uh, If you have any comments, I'll uh, leave them below and I will answer any questions if you have any and uh, Go ahead and click that red subscribe button if you want to see more uh, Do-it-yourself musician videos. Thanks for watching